Anguilla, Barbados, Bermuda, Croatia, Estonia, Georgia, Indonesia, Thailand. All of these places have been making headlines for unveiling exciting new digital nomad visa options, or for even just the possibility that they might. But there's one place that has been offering what I believe is the best digital nomad visa option, and nobody is talking about it. It seems like nobody knows about it. It's crazy, a number of people I've spoken to who want to move there and have extensively researched moving there have never even heard of this program. The visa is the gold card. And that place is Taiwan. What's up, guys? Welcome to my kitchen. <laughs> my wife is recording a podcast upstairs. So today's video is kind of about cities, kind of about travel, kind of about my own personal plans. The topic today is Taiwan's Employment Gold Card for Foreign Special Professionals. It was introduced back in February of 2018 in the hopes of attracting talented foreigners to the island. Now, anecdotally, there's been a huge surge in applications and recipients since the pandemic began. In the first two years of the program, there were a total of 584 gold cards issued. But in the eight months since then, which is basically when the pandemic started, that number has already doubled. But we're still talking about just a little over a thousand gold card holders, so it's not a massive wave. And I believe that a lot of that is because Taiwan as a destination somewhat flies under the radar. But also, the gold card is just not discussed very often. If Taiwan were to simply change the name to the Taiwan Digital Nomad Visa, I guarantee it would be all over the news. So in this video, I'm going to talk about why Taiwan is a great place for digital nomads, what makes the gold card the best digital nomad visa option, and who can apply and how. Because there is a small catch. Yes, there's always a catch. We'll get to that later, but first, please smash that like button to help me out with the YouTube algorithm. And also comment down below whether or not you've heard of the Taiwan gold card. First of all, let's talk about Taiwan. For urbanites, city lovers like myself and my wife, Taipei is one of our favorite cities in the world. We're planning to move there next year. It's just got an amazing mix of modern urban amenities, ease and convenience, culture, vibrancy, beauty, history, all of these best aspects of city living, yet it is also balanced by a very affordable cost of living and lots of nature throughout the city, plus beaches, forests, and mountains, all very close by. The food is amazing, people are super friendly, there's fast internet, and Taipei is extremely walkable. There's an excellent rapid transit system as well as a wonderful bicycling culture. And Taiwan as a whole is pretty well connected by high-speed rail. This car-free walkable lifestyle is very appealing to my family. I mean, living here in Florida, we are already a one vehicle, actually a one electric vehicle household. So it obviously matters to us. Besides Taipei, you have Taichung and Kaohsiung, which are two relatively large metro areas with some expat presence. And there are a variety of smaller and more secluded options, including some beautiful beach towns sprinkled throughout Taiwan. And when you get away from the already affordable capital city, amazingly, the cost drops even further. This means that in Taichung, for example, an urban area with nearly 3 million people with plenty of things to do, nice amenities. A single person can live comfortably on a thousand US dollars per month. Again, Taipei is the place for us, but there are other cities and towns to consider. Oh, and one more thing. Taiwan has handled the COVID pandemic incredibly well. As early as April, life within Taiwan has been pretty much back to normal. Yes, there's a strict 14-day quarantine for anyone who's able to enter, but inside the borders, things are great. In fact, one of my best friends and his family fled from Taiwan back in February to Southern California where they have a second home and extended family. But by the beginning of April, all of them, relatives included, were back in Taiwan because the situation was so much better there. And they're certainly not alone. Now, there are definitely negatives to Taipei and Taiwan, and I don't want to misrepresent and paint too rosy of a picture. But the point of this video, point of this segment, is to highlight the attractive qualities and let you know why you would want to live there. The 
Taiwan Employment Gold Card was not designed to be a digital nomad visa. This is certainly why it is not mentioned in any press about digital nomad visas. I have literally read or watched over 100 different articles, stories, and videos about these types of visas and have never seen Taiwan or the gold card mentioned, not a single time. And I'll see people talk about Germany or the Czech Republic's freelance visas. Portugal and Spain also have something similar and these have been around for a while also and they're not marketed as digital nomad visas either. Yet they're all still getting a lot of publicity. Even Malaysia's MM2H program or any of the rentista visas in Latin America have been popping up occasionally in these articles. And these are just really retirement visas that are structured in such a way that allows some digital nomads to participate. So I really don't know why Taiwan keeps getting overlooked. Here's the deal it isn't actually a digital nomad visa. Those are designed to target tourists who can support themselves and offer them a chance to stay for an extended period of time as a guest. But the gold card is an attempt to lure highly qualified foreigners to Taiwan, integrate them so they can potentially impact and contribute to Taiwan, raise the level of skills, advance the economy, and so forth and then possibly down the line, allow them to gain permanent residence or even citizenship. So unlike all of these other digital nomad visas, the gold card is intended to be something much more permanent. But because of this, it actually brings with it many benefits. First of all, it is good for three years. All the other ones I mentioned are one year maximum. Also, like I mentioned, it offers a path to permanent residence and citizenship. There is a bill currently in progress that will make that path even easier than it already is at the moment. Gold card holders even have access to NHI, Taiwan's national health insurance system. Most of the digital nomad visas require you to purchase more costly private health insurance, but in Taiwan, its very well-regarded public healthcare system is available to you and your family. Speaking of families, a gold card holder can sponsor a spouse, dependent children, and offer them full access to public schools and other public services that most of the other digital nomad visas will not do. Your parents are also allowed to come visit for up to one year at a time. But also understand that you do not need to stay. I've heard from digital nomads who got their gold card just to be in Taiwan for now. Your card is valid for three years, a time frame for which you can come and go as you please, and there's absolutely no obligation to stay for any amount of time in any of those three years. Sounds great, right? Where do I sign up? Well, I told you at the beginning that there was a catch. Digital nomad visas require you to exceed a certain income to be accepted. And while the Taiwan Gold Card does not actually require that, the easiest and by far the most popular way to apply for it is in fact through a simple minimum income. This is why I feel like I can call it a digital nomad visa. I mean, if it looks like a duck and sounds like a duck, am I right? But here's the catch. Unlike the other digital nomad visas, the gold card application process currently requires you to meet that minimum income threshold through salary and wages. In other words, you must have an employer. This means that self-employed freelancers who would be welcome in Barbados, Bermuda, Estonia, etc. might not qualify for the gold card through this pathway. Now, if you're a freelancer with your own incorporation set up to pay you a salary, if you're a creative with a loan out company, for example, then you're still good to go. So the catch only affects self-employed business owners who do not draw a salary. Also, this may not be a strict requirement. I drew my conclusions based on accounts shared by hundreds of previous applicants, but it is entirely possible that there are some exceptions who just have not shared their experiences. If that's you, let me know down in the comments below and I can update this story. Also, the Taiwan government is apparently aware of these issues, so we might see some clarity or even a change in the procedure 
coming soon. Now, that salary requirement is 160,000 Taiwanese dollars gross per month, which at the time of this recording is 5,559 US dollars. This equals a little under 67,000 US dollars annually. So if you currently have a salary of 67K or more, it can be a job you started yesterday, then you are eligible. This probably applies to a majority of newly remote employees in the US. But wait, there's more. You do not even need to be making that salary right now. Nor do you need to be making that salary when you are in Taiwan. Taiwan does not care if you receive the gold card, then move to Taiwan and have zero income for three years. All you need is to prove that you have earned that minimum salary for a full year at some point in the past three years. That is all. So if you worked a full-time office job with that salary and you quit two years ago, you would still be eligible for the gold card today. Remember, this isn't a digital nomad visa where you're proving you have the resources to support yourself. This is a work permit where you are theoretically proving that you have high level ability and expertise that makes you a valuable contributor to Taiwan. On top of it all, everything I just detailed only applies to those seeking the gold card through the economic category. Again, this is the easiest and most popular category by far, but there are seven other categories through which you can apply that each have their own unique requirements requirements to prove your expertise. They are more selective, but it is entirely possible that you could be eligible for one of those pathways in the event you do not meet the income requirement through the economic category. I won't get into those details in this video, but if you want more information, I highly recommend starting your research at taiwangoldcard.com. This is a tremendous, albeit unofficial resource put together by a coalition of current gold card holders. Oh, one more thing, and this applies to any of the digital nomad destinations you might be considering. If you want to keep your current employment, make sure your company will allow you to relocate to that particular country. Similar warning regarding your personal taxes. Do your research and be aware of any income tax ramifications. As always, drop your questions or corrections down in the comments below. Please consider liking, subscribing, and smashing the notification bell so that I will see you next time. Oh, oh, oh.